Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering what I believe are the best settings to use in the NVIDIA control panel for gaming on Windows 11 in 2023. So the NVIDIA control panel is a central location for configuring a NVIDIA GPU on Windows, and it typically comes as part of the overall driver installation. Now that's not to be confused with the GeForce Experience application, which is a standalone, and it allows you to automatically determine the best in-game graphic settings based on your hardware, as well as use NVIDIA specific technology such as image scaling, shadow play, game stream, and Anzel. Now instead, I'm referring to the NVIDIA control panel that can be accessed by right-clicking and launching from the desktop shortcut, or alternatively through the start menu. The main thing we're going to cover in this video is the Manage 3D Settings section, which is divided into two tabs, Global Settings, which is applied to the entire installation, and Program Settings, which allows you to specify a profile for a particular application, mm -hmm. such as a game. Although, if you do set something globally, then as you'll find, it will apply to the Program Settings profile unless you manually override it. So if we have a look at the Global Settings tab, there are several options that we could change from the default, so I'm going to explain my reasoning behind this now, as well as a brief indication of what each of these options does. So the first option is Image Scaling, and this allows you to render a game at a lower resolution, which is percentage based, and then use sharpening to sharpen the image, as what will typically happen is the image will become more blurred, but the end result of doing this is to achieve a higher overall frame rate at the cost of a poorer image quality. Now, personally, I have to set it off, mainly because if I'm gonna take advantage of this, I'd rather do this in-game and not apply it to the entire desktop. Or if I wanted to do it for a particular game, I would just do it on a program settings profile level. So next is ambient occlusion, which is used to apply more realistic shadows and ambient light at the cost of performance. And you've got three options. You have off, performance, or quality. Now, I've set this to off for the simple fact that if a game supports ambient occlusion, then it's going to be better implemented at the game level rather than the driver level, as the former would be typically less prone to shadow glitches. But of course, if a game does support ambient occlusion, then you know there's nothing to stop you disabling it in-game and then trying it again at the game profile level instead. Next is anisotropic filtering, which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, this is a non-linear texture filtering technique that helps to make textures appear clearer and more detailed and it's actually one of the options available that I do recommend you enable, and I enable it at 16x, since this does have a minimum performance hit, especially if a game doesn't support this in the first place. But worst case scenario, if a game does support it, there's nothing to stop you turning it off in game or even setting a custom profile. Anti aliasing. Now, there's quite a few options for this, but just to keep it simple, this is used to help reduce the appearance of jagged lines at the cost of some performance. And out of all the options that are available, I would recommend turning off FXAA, Gamma Correction and Transparency, whilst leaving Mud and Setting to Application Controlled. Now the reason for this is that when it comes to anti-aliasing, the in-game options will always be superior, plus applying it globally will affect the desktop as well, so you can basically make text appear more blurred than it needs to be. And also a final note on this is that it will conflict with upscaling technologies such as DLS and DLAA, which do implement their own form of anti-aliasing. DSR, or Dynamic Super Resolution, allows you to render a game at a higher resolution than your monitor supports and then downsample it to your native resolution. This is effectively brute forcing anti-aliasing, which obviously comes with a performance hit, because you're effectively rendering it at higher than what you would normally be able to do. And honestly, the result's not great unless you're running an incredibly old game that doesn't support anti-aliasing in the first place. Personally, it's not worth the effort, so I leave DSR options set to off. Next on the list is Low Latency Mode, which on paper sounds fantastic, as it's something that you may want to enable when you're playing competitive shooters, as this can help to reduce input lag. But the reality is that games like that will more than likely have support for NVIDIA Reflex, which is basically makes this option moot. So on that basis, I'll leave this one too off. So next is multi-framed sampled AA. This is a anti-aliasing method designed to supplement any game that originally supports MSAA or multi-sampling anti-aliasing. And all this does is simply reduce the performance costs. So there's no reason not to have this set to on. At the end of the day, if a game doesn't support MSAA in the first place, then this option doesn't do anything. So there's no harm in leaving it on. 
power management mode. So typically you'll have two options here, you'll either have normal or prefer maximum performance. And if you're on a desktop, there's no reason at all why you would not choose the latter, as this sets your GPU to always run at the top clock speed, which is essential when gaming. Now there may be a scenario where you may not want to select that option and select normal instead, but that's if you've got maybe got a laptop with switchable graphics. But then again, they typically support on-demand graphics with Optimus, so again, a bit of a moot point to do that. Share the cache size. You really want to set this one to unlimited, and the reason for that is that games are getting more and more shader intensive, and limiting and having to reprocess shaders when you hit a cap does introduce stuttering, especially if the developer has poorly implemented shader management. Plus, at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, storage is dirt cheap. Uh, texture filtering. So, like uh, anisotropic filtering, this does affect the texture quality in game. So, I do recommend a setting negative. LOD BIOS to clamp and a quality to high quality. Unless you've got an underpowered machine, which in that case, quality could be set to high performance, but the visuals will suffer. Although really these options don't really affect performance that much. So triple buffering is typically used to prevent performance drops when your frame rate tanks, but since this option only affects OpenGL games, which are a rarity today, as DirectX and Vulkan are the dominant graphical APIs, I just set this to off. And the final one we're going to look at is a vertical sync, which is the most controversial option here, as a V-sync is designed to resolve a phenomenon known as tearing, which occurs when your frame rate exceeds your maximum monitor's refresh rate. But as a result of this, it can cause input lag. Now, some people do prefer to have screen tearing just to avoid the input lag, especially in the competitive gaming world. But my recommendation is to set this option to use the 3D application setting. The only other way you would get around the tearing issue would be to purchase and use either a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, which minimizes input lag and then also removes any screen tearing, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. Now there are a couple of other settings I didn't cover, mainly because they're not really relevant to gaming or they may be specific to my particular setup. So what was the actual result of making these changes? Well, certainly when it comes to games that allow you to mod in textures such as Skyrim or Fallout 4. I did notice that the quality of the textures was more detailed, more pronounced, and really overall performance I found was more stable with less frame drops. Now, again, this may be down to my particular setup, but when I was doing research for this video, the general conclusion was that making these changes was a positive and had no real downsides. But in either case, they were my recommendations for the best settings to use in the Nvidia control panel for gaming on Windows 11 in 2023. So in conclusion, the NVIDIA control panel has been a staple for Windows users for the longest time, and for someone that likes to tweak their systems, it can be a bit of a goldmine. Whilst it's not as powerful as or featured as GeForce Experience, if you just want to set up a basis for your gaming rig, then this is the best place to start. But as always, thank you very much for watching this video today, and if you did find it helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, share the video, and if you want to support me in what I do, then please subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye now.